Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and black or Esper colored curses deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And one of the main centerpieces here is Ariat of the Charmed Apple. This 3 mana 2-4 says each creature that's enchanted by an aura we control can't attack us or a planeswalker we control. Not going to be super relevant in this deck since a lot of our auras already prevent the opponent's creatures from attacking or blocking. Could be more relevant if we were playing some of the aura roll tokens from Wilds of Eldrain, which we are not. But then the important part here, at the beginning of our end step, each opponent loses X life and we gain X life, where X is the number of auras we control. So our deck is filled to the brim with auras that will be mainly used to prevent the opponent's creatures from hitting us, but we also have some curses that have the aura subtype, so those can potentially make opponent's spells more expensive and also draw a lot of cards with Curse of Surveillance, and those will also synergize with Ariat to then hopefully drain the opponent to death while also gaining a lot of life, which is how helpful against those red aggressive decks in the format. And then besides Ariette, another important win condition is Shieldred, and I can already see a lot of eyes rolling. Of course, Shieldred played in a lot of decks in Standard, but is actually incredibly synergistic here as a creature that can gain a ton of life when paired with Curse of Surveillance, so that allows us to potentially beat a lot of aggressive decks in the late game, even after deploying a 5-man enchantment that doesn't necessarily impact the board. And then Shieldred can also drain the opponent to death, so that kind of complements Ariette nicely, as we can just sit there with our legendary creatures and have the opponent drained to death without ever needing to attack them, which also plays around cards like the Wandering Emperor, which is a nice upside. And then we also have two copies of Catilda, which has good synergy in an enchantment deck, as it becomes bigger the more enchantments and spirits we control, has flying and lifelink, as well as protection from vampires, so that can also come in handy against those aggressive decks. And then from the graveyard we can also disturb Catilda, in which case it does actually become an aura, so can then also synergize with our Ariat. And then looking at the rest of our deck, I already mentioned some of our curses. Four copies of Curse of Silence is a card that's not always all that amazing, but in a best of one standard meta, where a lot of the decks are well defined and you know what you're up against as soon as the opponent plays their first land drop, Curse of Silence is actually not bad as kind of a tempo play to slow the opponent down. And then especially if we name something that's already kind of expensive, making it cost two more could prevent the opponent from casting it altogether. And then a Curse of Silence pairs quite well with Duress can take away a non-creature non-land card from the opponent's hand. We get to see it in the process, so now we've got a better idea what to name with Curse of Silence if we had both. And we also need to increase our curse count on the battlefield, not only to have an extra aura to drain the opponent with Ariat, but also because we're playing four copies of Curse of Surveillance, the main reason we're splashing blue in an otherwise black-white deck. This enchants our opponent, and then at the beginning of their upkeep, we get to draw a card for each curse attached to the opponent. So if we have a Curse of Surveillance and a Curse of silence attached to them we get to draw two cards and of course the more of them in play the better they do stack in multiples and this will also gain us a ton of life if we have a shielded in play as we now get to draw quite a few cards and it's also an extra aura that can drain the opponent with Ariat, so plenty of synergy to go around and then the rest of our deck has a lot of interaction to keep the opponent's creatures in check. We've got one copy of Candle Trap, one copy of Witness Protection, and these are one-offs because we can potentially surge them up with our two copies of Invasion of Theros, which is here to find any aura when we play it. So this can help find our Curse of Surveillance, we can find some removal spells, mainly Ossification is probably our best one, as this can actually exile an opposing creature or planeswalker, but still counts as an aura as it has to enchant our basic land. So that's also why we have a bit of a weird mana base with lots of basics and two copies of Obscura Storefront to search them up to make sure we have enough basics to enable ossification as one of the better removal spells we can play in this archetype. And then we also have four copies of Planar Disruption, can enchant artifact, creature or planeswalker, preventing it from attacking or blocking or activating its abilities. So having an answer to planeswalkers here is also quite useful as it's not going to be dead against opposing control decks. And then we've got two copies of the Iron Crag, which can help us play a turn 4 Curse of Surveillance, maybe after a turn 3 Shieldred, that's the dream. And then if we play a legendary creature, of which we have many, we can also transform it into an equipment, so it can still help out if we happen to draw the second copy. And then we already mentioned Invasion of Theros, but we can also transform it if we manage to deal 4 damage to it with a Shieldred, or maybe with a large Catilda. And then we get Ephara, which can also draw extra cards whenever we play an enchantment, and turns indestructible if we have enough of them in play. 
and then our mana base, lots of basics as we mentioned to make sure we enable ossification, so no room for the channel lands here unfortunately, despite them having good synergy with our legendary creatures, and then plenty more dual lands for mana fixing, including a Rafine's Tower as a tri land, which is another perk of being Esper. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a potentially keepable hand, although missing black mana for Duress and Shieldred might actually be a mulligan, although if we find black mana it is pretty good having Duress to then give us information on what to name with Curse. I'll try it. Not expecting to cast a turn 4 Shieldred, but hopefully turn 5 or 6 is good enough against a red aggro. We've got a pretty good idea what to name, although not hating on just removing Swift Spear first. And I'll do so with Disruption, that's fine. Ossification, a better answer to something like Squee, which could come back. Kumano on turn two. And Iron Crag. So, can Iron Crag plus Curse of Silence naming Lightning Strike is always a good one since it's not their cheapest card, so making it cost two more is pretty significant. There's too many three mana creatures we could name Godric, Squee, and not every deck plays a lot of those. So, the only card we know for sure they'll have four copies of is Lightning Strike. And I prefer naming two drops as opposed to one drops. Because making a one drop cost two more still makes them pretty easy to cast. Adversary picks up a plus one counter, so that's going to be exiled next turn most likely. And Ariette's going to be great once we find our black mana. Still going to take two from Kumano, there's a Mishra's Foundry. So yeah, we got to get some of these creatures in play as soon as possible, otherwise we're going to get burnt out. If our next two draw steps are Swamp and Swamp, I'm liking my chances, although there's Godric getting in for four. Alright, there's a Shattered Sanctum, so we can play Ariette, which will immediately drain for three here. And then I could transform Iron Crag, since I don't really need the colorless mana, unless we draw the five mana Curse of Surveillance. So we're back up to 10. Not sure yet if I'm blocking if they attack. Phoenix Chick, alright, so we don't need to worry about a Monstrous Rage. Just take 5 in the air. And Ossification, also a nice one. So let's Ossification Godric. And then we can still Duress. Seeing double lightning strikes, so Curse of Silence is doing work. Pass a turn. Gain four up to eight. Opponent is attacking, so that sort of implies that they're gonna play land lightning strike Ariette to finish it off. So it's a close call whether I take it or not. Ariette is draining for four each turn, so that's pretty nice. Although if they have to 2 for one themselves to kill Ariette, I can still sack Curse, and then if I find a Swamp to play Shieldred, we're in business. So I think I still block here. Hope they didn't pick up a Monstrous Rage. They did. Yeah, I was kind of banking on just second main land cast a Lightning Strike. But we did find Swamp for Shieldred, that helps. So your opponent is still unable to cast a Lightning Strike. Now if our opponent finds a fourth land, they could Lightning Strike me to try and kill me, but then we would also draw with Shieldred in play to gain two. So that would actually work out if our opponent sends everyone, and they do. And then hope they point the Lightning Strike upstairs instead of at Shieldred. Otherwise we do lose our 4-5. Alright, our opponent points Lightning Strike upstairs, so gain two with Curse, and we're not dead yet. Still at two, and Katilda's next. And then gotta hang back with Shieldred, I think. Rafine's Tower I can play, but I might be better off cycling it. Yeah, 
opponent falls to 9. And another Phoenix check, okay. So no great attacks. Not sure what this is all about. And find another Catilda. So I could equip and then attack and then have seven life gained here and then Shieldred can finish them off. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got our basic for ossification. Invasion can get another curse or another ossification. And then Shieldred to hopefully gain a lot of life with all the card draw that's incoming. Let's see what we're up against. Some sort of multicolor deck. Okay, so it doesn't bode well for Shieldred surviving. They might also have answers to our enchantments. I see, so it's an Invasion of Alara combo deck. Well, for now, might as well ossification, slow down their mana development. And then if we find Curse of Silence, I guess we can do so next turn with Invasion of Theros. Definitely name Invasion of Alara. And that's going to significantly slow down the opponent's game plan. Although I could still do that next turn and for now play Shieldred. Although if I Invasion Curse, then next turn I get to play Curse of Surveillance. Which they're less likely to interact with than Shieldred. So I think I still like Curse of Silence now. And then Surveillance will immediately draw two cards. Okay, so that now costs 7 mana. And let's play Curse of Surveillance. Now I guess we would have to worry about Leyline Binding my Curse and then Invasion of Alara. So that is a reason to go Duress plus Shieldred this turn. Fair. No Leyline Binding, I'll take the Invasion anyway and strand them with Atraxa and Atali. And then now we can go digging, but first we want to transform our Invasion of Theros. So we get to draw when playing an enchantment. Curse our opponents. Ifara now indestructible. This is beautiful. Draw two, gain four. And our opponent just has to watch as we keep drawing more and more cards. Now next turn they do get to cast a Trax Hour Itali, so that's still definitely a concern. We can play another Curse of Surveillance, increase our card draw, could play Ariat to increase our damage output. Both are reasonable. Boon falls to 11. I kind of want to just curse them once again. Don't expect to take anything with duress. I guess a herd migration is going to get discarded now. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, play Curse of Surveillance, which makes it more likely that we find an answer to Atraxa, which we currently don't have yet. Curse of Silence would have been nice. Alright, so now Planar Disruption, a pretty decent answer to Atraxa, letting us attack past it. And then with Ariette we should be able to close out the game. Point actually goes for Itali, hitting Curse of Surveillance and looks like a Virtue of Persistence. But yeah, that's not going to be good enough here. So Planar Disruption, Itali. Play Ariette. And then I could also Curse of Silence, Atraxa, for what it's worth. Yeah. 
have another Curse of Silence we could play, but just want to see the area trigger. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got Iron Crank setting up turn 3 Shieldred, turn 4 Curse of Surveillance. So that's kind of the dream. Although I'm sure opponent will have some answers, being a multicolor domain deck with cards like a Leyline Binding, which combos quite well with Up the Beanstalk. Probably prefer keeping Curse of Surveillance over Shieldred if I had to pick. But of course a combination of both is what makes it so great. So your opponent can cast a 3 mana binding. And they're going to march instead, pitching a card. Also draws with up the beanstalk. So Shieldred deals two more on the way out. Alright, let's hope our Cursed can stick around. Also gets exiled by March of Otherworldly Light. And it does seem like they have a Leyline Binding in hand, perhaps. Curse of Silence increases our card draw and will likely name Binding. Although our opponent can just cast it in response. Still worth a shot, since I'm sure opponent's playing the full playset. And then there's not much else we can do. Opponent's got a Memory Deluge here to draw. So this might be the banned Beanstalk deck that did well at Worlds. And I featured not too long ago on the official MTG Arena channel if you're interested. Only plays a one memory deluge. No farewells either, so that's good to know. Invasion of Theros can find another Curse of Surveillance. That might be the plan. Have to watch out for Syncopates. But we can pay for it here. Question is whether I want to play Ariette, or if we play around a counterspell. I think I still play it, since our opponent could also just have a Wandering Emperor to keep up the pressure. And then they're less likely to counter my curse. And there's Syncopate for three. At least didn't draw them a card with up the Beanstalk. There's the Leyline Binding. Do we draw with Curse of Silence? Don't think so. So that will remove one of our curses, so now I only draw one card with Curse of Surveillance, but I did find another one. So that's why it's important to keep the Curse of Silence in play. And there's another one. Okay, so Curse of Silence... Could name Binding once again. Could name March, although they only have one or two copies left. Wandering Emperor, they have four copies of. So that also makes sense. But um, yeah, the main interaction I'm worried about is enchantment removal, which would be Leyline Binding. So I think that's still what I name. So I get to draw three here. Buseju, yeah, that also answers our curse. Can't name that one with uh, Curse of Silence. And I'll leave the cycling lands in the deck. Still draw two. And can cycle a tower now. Another up the beanstalk. Resolves. Ossification to answer the whale and uh, wandering emperor. Finding a duress would also be nice. But I'm still gonna jam Curse of Surveillance here. Hope they didn't draw their one-off negate. And keep thinning out the deck. Draw three. Okay, there's Shieldred. Although I'm sure it's gonna get removed as soon as it hits the battlefield. Alright, so what else do we want to name? Good name Sunfall, make it cost 7 mana. 
and then at least I'll be tapped out. Could name Syncopate, make it cost two more, although they would still be able to counter almost everything here. So, yeah, naming Sunfall I think makes sense. And then as long as I don't attack with my creatures, our opponent's got a lot fewer ways to remove them, since Wandering Emperor doesn't work, and uh, the Whale's Adventure also can't target our creature. It's gonna be a Syncopate drawing two cards, countering Shieldred. So now I can still Invasion, and get another Curse of Surveillance, I think. And then sooner or later, we'll find a duress to have a look. Ariat and Shieldred can help close out the game. So both decks just drawing an obscene amount of cards. Alright, so now we can check if the coast is clear. Opponent's gonna Leyline Binding, triggering a couple of our curses. Let's decline. Snipes are a curse of surveillance. And we see a hand of Sunfall. Double Whale dissipates. They can't cast this turn. So I'm not too worried about it. So, yeah, could just take Sunfall as the only answer to Shieldred. And then play Shieldred, play another curse of surveillance. That looks good. And then I can transform Iron Crag. Although I don't think I'll be attacking anytime soon. And then any point in casting the rest now? I don't think so. Gain a bunch of life. I guess decking could be a concern. If we don't get to attack here. But we'll find an area sooner or later. Opponent's gonna flash back Memory Deluge most likely. So not the best time to be casting Duress. We've got two Catilda, so if they do get wiped up by Sunfall it's not a disaster. I guess I could duress just to see what's up, since we'll likely find another duress by next turn. And then if our opponent dissipates, then they won't be able to necessarily flashback Deluge. Okay, make disappear, we don't mind. Take the dissipate. Now I still won't be able to attack with Shieldred since they have a ton of answers, but uh, can play Catilda. And then our opponent's going to be digging for Sunfall using Memory Deluge. And uh, yeah, that's going to happen. Doesn't count as drawing cards, and also doesn't trigger up the Beanstalk, so Shieldred doesn't trigger. And a Broker's Charm to draw two. Alright, that's gonna trigger Shieldred. Discard to hand size, Candle Trap can go. And we'll draw four cards. Finding a backup Shieldred. So now I'm definitely entertaining the idea of sacking a Curse of Silence. So we don't end up decking in a couple turns. There's Sunfall, as we suspected. So sure, I'll sack my curse. They should have one Sunfall left in the deck. They usually play three. But Shieldred's gonna do some damage on the way out. Bones all the way down to four. And then, yeah, if we can find an Ariette, we can potentially just kill the opponent's before they take another turn. So we'll cycle. 
another duress can't hurt. Opponent's gonna discard to hand size. Okay, so duress and then play shieldreds. And our opponent's gonna syncopate, they can cast for x equals three. And then nothing else super relevant. Play Shieldreds. And then I have to ask myself if I want to play Catilda here as well. I think it's worth it, even though it could run into the final Sunfall. We'll still get to draw and likely find Ariat to close out the game. And then I can suit up one of my creatures if I'd like. Okay. We'll have 10 cards remaining here. There's Ariat. So I can immediately drain for 3. Can also put some of my Aurans on my own creature just to increase her enchantment count. Bone falls to 2. I guess they can exile their own creature with Wandering Emperor just to gain two life. Finally, I'm home. Don't really have a way to interact with it. I am almost sad to see you. But yeah, that's not a pretty play. Zero points got one unknown attacking into another Emperor or Whale. Probably still doesn't make any sense. So we can ossification. Their uh, Wandering Emperor put another enchantment in play. And then Ariat should be game over. Can play Iron Crag since we transformed the first one so it doesn't have the same name. So we've got four enchantments in play. I guess I could play something else here just to increase my enchantment count. Planar Disruption, my own shield roots. Maybe even twice to play around another two life gain somehow. Although yeah, our opponent sees a writing on the wall and concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and... Uh our hand is not the best, but I'll still try it out. Up against green-white enchantments. Okay, so planar disruption, not the best answer to the naturalist. Could still uh, curse of silence here, since we've got a pretty good idea what our opponent could play next. Hallowed Haunting would be a decent name, although not all versions play it. Calyx might also be a good one. So let's go with Calyx. Since most decks will play four copies. And then I think it's guided by fate here. No double white yet for potential Hallowed Haunting. Also Vacation also would have been a decent one to name here. Opponent's got a Skrelv next. Okay, so we can play Catilda. And then we might see an Ossification. And then hopefully Shieldred survives. Yep, there it is. And then Curse of Surveillance will be awesome with Curse of Silence already in play, with Shieldred drawing us extra cards. Could now see Calyx, thanks to the discount from Naturalist, just gonna be a companion. So they don't have an answer to Shieldred yet. Generous Visitor. And this might be an Audacity, no, just uh, another companion. And another visitor they must have drawn. 
Okay, two cards left in hand. And I'm just gonna play Surveillance since Disruption's not that great on this board. And then we want to enchant our opponents. Shieldred can hang back to play defense. And then if we can find Ariette, that would be great too. So we'll be the ones drawing two cards and gaining four life. Also Vacation can exile the Naturalist, although we need to deal with Skrull first. Opponent did finally find another Ossification to deal with Shieldred, so this is gonna hurt. And a Reign of Truth, pumping Naturalist, I'm sure. So we're gonna take a massive hit. And yeah, we might just be dead here, since Skralf can protect Naturalists. We'll get another pump from Reign of Truth. Although finding another blocker is handy. So I can play in our Disruption, Skralf. Or Ossification it. So we actually remove an artifact or enchantment from the battlefield. And then we'll see if they... Activated in response. But since Reign of Truth can pump any of their creatures, I'm gonna have to chum block. And planar disruption is not an out even with two of them. So I think our only hope is Shieldred. And then we can gain a bit of life here. Interestingly, our opponent named Black, so it could still disruption the naturalist, but then they just pump any of their other creatures and kill me. So we would have needed an extra blocker. So Shieldred's gain 4 to 8. They can pump Companion with Reign of Truth. And then assuming I have to jump with Shieldred's, I'll still take 10 damage, which is just enough here. And there's Calyx at long last. Potentially a mistake, since we get to draw a card and gain 2. While their opponent also gets some plus 1 plus 1 counters here. So it kind of equals out. Alright, if they didn't find that uh, second ossification in time, then we would have been in the driver's seat, but Reign of Truth, good enough here to carry them to a victory. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty awkward, and no blue mana for curse. No planes or a basic land for ossification. So I'll take a mulligan. This is probably keepable. Witness Protection can go, and then the rest gives us information on what to name with Curse of Silence. So we'll start there. And see Invasion, Virtue of Persistence, Shieldred, Stormseeker, Poisoner. So kind of a black-red mid-range deck. I think we take the Invasion, and then Curse of Silence probably names Shieldred. The Stormseeker is also annoying, not something we really want to play our Disruption. Underdog, on the other hand, I don't mind. I guess with Virtue they could kill their own Underdog to eventually blitz it later. Okay, so play Ariette. And then our opponent could use Harvester plus Virtue to kill it. That might still be acceptable. And then with the lands, maybe Curse plus Gatilda, which will be a 3-3. So Ariat down. Okay, so Curse of Silence names Shieldred still, I think. And make sure to name the right children to the Apocalypse. I've made this mistake before of naming Whispering One. Which is not in standard, but apparently can be named with Curse of Silence. Their opponent discarding Shieldred with a Blood Token makes sense. 
And yeah, we're just a land away from Curse of Surveillance taking over. Opponents got a food token they could sacrifice, but they might keep it to combo with Poisoner. Trespasser, I don't really mind. And Ossification is next. Well, I don't really want Ossification, Trespasser and discard Curse of Surveillance, although if I don't cast anything it will transform into a 4-4 and then Stormseeker also becomes much scarier. Although I could just take the hit and then extra Ossification the Slasher and hope they don't have more of them. Upside of Ossification now is also we grow Catilda up to a 4-4 so it doesn't die to Poisoner should they sank the food token. Alright, I guess we'll have to do this. That feels bad. One Curse of Surveillance is probably still enough, if we can get it going. And now Catilda also survives a future minus three from uh, Scorn. Opponent using Decadent Dragon hitting our land. And a Curse of Silence, we'll see what it names. Also Vacation, all right. So Curse of Surveillance is next. Hit for five. And then draw two cards. Ossification does cost two more now. So I can just disruption the dragon. Hang on to ossification so they don't get to draw with curse. Opponent's gonna have to sank that food token soon. And draw two more. Okay. So their opponent could cast Virtue of Persistence, but that's not going to help them. Just a Gumdrop Poisoner. And they can give it haste with a Stormseeker to gain four. Don't think that's going to be enough, since we can play two more enchantments. So, also vacation. Stormseeker, and then Disruption the Poisoner. And that should get us across the finish line. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a second white source for Catilda, but otherwise Keepable enough. We've got plenty of enchantments, a red to start draining, and then a cheap removal spell also important if we're up against a more aggressive deck. Turn one Swamp and Dream Thief, so blue-black fairies. So naming a counter spell like Spell Stutter with Curse of Silence makes sense. Don't really want a disruption the Dream Thief yet. Could also name their removal spell. Although that one could still be effective with Curse of Silence taxing it. So Spell Stutter will now cost 4 mana, which is a lot harder to keep up. Now we also have our second white for Catilda. Ego Drain can check out our hand. That one's good too. Takes Ariette. So Catilda it is. Shield Road also coming up. So I'm liking my chances this game. Could see Fairy Fencing take out Catilda. This attack, what does this attack mean? Hmm. Yeah, can't quite place it. Fairy Fencing would kill Catilda regardless here. Is there a pump spell I'm not aware of? I think I block. I can't think of any reason not to. Alright. Creature down. Opponent passes, so yeah. That worked out for us. Can attack with Catilda, play Shieldred. I guess our opponent could trade for a Fairy Mastermind here. Are we okay with that? I guess so, since we don't have a clean answer to it. And it could punish us for drawing extra cards. 
So there it is. And then we can maybe enchant our shield root with the backside of Catilda. Opponent passes, Iron Crag can give us 5 mana for next turn, for now attack. And our opponent might be planning to draw with the Dream Thief, which will lose them uh, 3 life total. It's going to be a Fairy Vandal end of turn. So fairy fencing here for x equals 2 would be enough to kill Shieldred. It's going to be another ego drain, that's fine. So opponent's going to be unable to cast spell stutter, even if they have it. And sure, we can just go for the disturb here. Could also attack first, even though we lose out on a bit of damage on the off chance that they were sandbagging a go for the throat. But I imagine it would have killed Childred right away then. Put on chumps. And another mastermind. So with protection it will lose flying so we can fly over it and don't need to worry about the ability. Also vacation could also work Kind of like the Witness Protection. Keep Ossification for maybe a Planeswalker on the off chance that our opponent's playing one. Also could have considered just playing Candle Trap on the legitimate business person to increase our enchantment count so Shieldred would have drained him to death next turn. But our opponent actually holding the end which they could only cast after falling below 5 life. So yeah, that's pretty painful now. We're out of threats. Although at 43 life we have a lot of time to draw out of it. Halo Forger get back their discard spell, gets rid of ossification. Can candle tramp the Forager. And then still only take one per turn. And then if we find Ariat we can just win the game on the spot. I'll take a Curse of Surveillance, which we can now find. Okay. Now our opponent could have a Spell Stutter in hand, which they will be able to cast next turn to get rid of our Curse of Surveillance. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Opponent just going for Sleep Cursed Fairy. So now we don't need to worry about the counter spell. Unless they have a make disappear, I suppose. But uh, yeah, gonna go for it. That works. So we get to draw two cards. Got another curse in hand to increase that number. Very vandal to increase the pressure. So we'll draw two. And we don't need to worry about the uh, mastermind here, since it's just a 1-1 citizen going about its day. Fairy Vandal up to 2 power now. And then I gotta think about what to name with Curse of Silence. Not opposed to naming Talion as something kind of powerful they could play here if they are running it. Not all Fairy decks necessarily are. Could name like another Halo Forager. Could name Spell Stutter once again, just to make sure they absolutely cannot cast it. Which is also reasonable. And then if we top deck Ariette, it should just be game over. Okay. So we get to draw three. Still have plenty of time to find a win condition. It's 
So yeah, Spell Stutter is going to cost them 6 mana, so I guess they could still cast it here to counter Ariat. Don't have enough mana for Curse plus Ariat, so what makes more sense? I guess cast the Curse of Surveillance first, which they'll counter, and then next turn Ariat can win the game and we can easily double spell alongside it. Alright, no Spell Stutter, so that resolves. Just another Fairy Mastermind. Alright, that can sort of punish me for drawing extra cards now. That's okay, we'll draw a lot of them, so it's gonna be worth it. So we get to draw eight cards total. And we've got multiple Ariats. Alright. Yeah, this was worth it. No regrets whatsoever. Gix can draw the opponent more cards, but at two life, they have to be pretty careful. So we're still at 27. Opponent can draw one card at most. And they're just gonna stay at two. Take our turn. And yeah, now we've got a lot of ways to end this. Maybe a duress first to have a look. And then Ariet will get the job done. Just a swamp in hand. Alright. I'm gonna have to discard to hand size, so I may as well play Catilda here. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. Ariet's gonna drain them for six and win us the game. Awesome. Alright, so we get to see our Esper Curses deck in action. Now our deck can certainly have some awkward draws to start out, mainly because of our high basic land count. We might be missing a color, especially if we need double black for Shieldred. We also have a few tapped lands starting out, so cards like Thalia from the opponent can be extra punishing when it increases our cost by one. And then a card like Planar Disruption is not really an answer we want, since that tax will still apply. So sometimes having Ossification to actually get rid of the creature is a lot more important, and there's plenty of other examples of creatures that have an annoying effect if they stay in play, even if they can't attack and block. So that also kind of showcases some of the limitations of the removal, that's an aura. But once we actually get to deploy our Ariette, and once we start drawing with our Curse of Surveillance, the deck feels quite amazing. So overall, not too dissatisfied with where it ended up. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.